We haven't mentioned, Charlie Healy dumps that one in. Healy, the product of Calgary, Alberta. Foot race now. Elise Cartin from Rosemary, Quebec. Can't quite beat Maya Laplante. Good body positioning there by Mael. She's been given a big job. She starts on the top pairing tonight. So here's Alyssa Biesenthal. Biesenthal up to Healy. Biesenthal and Healy had all kinds of, all kinds of uh, chemistry to start the season, or to start the preseason. They'll look to build on that. Kate McLean in to chase the rookie. Forced to twist and turn. Kellyanne LaForge. Good step up there by Minville. Minville and Merriman almost had a coming together. Minville, I can't get it to Taylor Scott, Terrio. And Terrio. Centering pass, kick saved by Sarazan. The first test of the season is one she handles. Jade Picard over the line, disrupted. Here's Krasinski, it's loud in this building. Turned over, centering pass, uh, saved by Sarazan again. Couple good stops there made by Sarah Zen. They were made as a result of just really sloppy puck play. And uh, I think Catherine Burkby has her own little fan squad here. She came out on the ice and all we heard were cheers and then she touched the puck and all she heard were cheers. I wish I had my own fan cheering squad following me around and clapping every time I did something. That would be cool. Catherine Burkby, the fifth year player, such a big part of the heart of this program. And we love when we see families and friends out to support. As we mentioned, the Catherine Burkby section sitting right in front of us. Finds way to Ariane Gagnon. Looks across for Lalonde. Lalonde has Florence Lassard ahead of her. She chips it high off the boards and it's on to Lassard. Lassard one on one with Faubert. Lassard couldn't get a shot off. Good for, uh, back checking there by Faubert. Lassard stays on that one and it bounces off the goal. Picard looking for Etier. Etier will be relied upon heavily a centering pass that Florence Lassard just couldn't get on the end of. Kathleen Reedman forced backwards. Picard pinches up from defense, and Reedman has a stretch pass. Lassard touches it on to Gagnon, who helps it on its way. Alex Clavel will get there first. Her dad in attendance tonight. We saw the Sudbur Sudbury Junior Wolves jersey just off to the corner of our screen. Laurie, Laurie Fontaine, and it's up to her captain, Jessica Boulanger. Boulanger to Pouliot. Pouliot touches it on to Roland. And disrupted at the line. Melie Laplante, twisty, turning, and Roland hits the ice. Jay Todd at the back door. Laplante stops up. Laplante has Clavel on to Prue. Prue backhand down low. Here's Todd. Todd on the backhand, chips it to Beatrice Billadeau. But she's dispossessed. Roland just will hack it out to center, and Angelique Prue is bowled over. Arms stay down. This game will have a physical tone as Roland steps forward, and at one, finds its way to Kate McLean, nicely off the bench. Todd, Todd has McLean going to the front of the net and Faubert will get in the way, or sorry, that's LaForge who gets, on, gets in the way. I just wanna comment how University of Montreal did a really nice job defending in their zone where there was a loose puck that the GGs were trying to cycle, trying to get something going, and they actually put three of their players that all collapsed on that loose puck and that's what really dispossessed the GGs. Face off one, the GGs have possession. Kate McLean down low. Charlie Healy can't get there, but it finds its way back to McLean. McLean twisting, turning. Down low to Healy. She's edged off the puck. Krasinski pinches in. Healy on it. She has Biesenthal going to the net. Never found its way to her. Faubert, or LaForge rather. Dak down low. Charlie Healy tries a little bit of edge work. Michaela Krasinski just hammers it right back where it came from, the GGs, putting in a big effort on their cycle play early on in this one. Wicona Laloche over the line. Ariane Minville is able to watch her, but it finds its way back to Laloche. Funny bounce off the boards that Reese Mepham's aware of. Faubert will pinch in down and Charlie Healy can't clear the zone. Got on, got on a centering pass that never found its intended target. There's Faubert. Faubert just a chip on net that is easily corralled by Mejica Sarazen. 
That's a smart play there by Mahikas Harrison. Instead of allowing it just to go. Instead of allowing it to just go to the corner and keep the play going, she saw that her team was tired, tired legs out there, and she made the smart decision to slow the play down and just freeze that puck for a faceoff. Just another cheer of the crowd as Catherine Berkby steps on the ice. I'm telling you, if I had someone cheering every time I stepped somewhere, it'd be such a great time. And there you hear him, Berkby to Scott. Scott looking for Berkby. Scott a stick in her midsection. The arms stay down. Picked off at the line. Great read there by Reedman. Really great read there. She was able to keep it in the zone without anything going offside. It's a very confident group on the ice right now for the University of Ottawa. Merriman. Merriman has Scott. Merriman. Head up. Kara Merriman. Berkby. Pru. Angelique Pru. Deflected puck that trickles just wide. The Ketabans can't seem to get their way out of the zone. Merriman. She's taken down. The arms stay down. Sloppy play by the Ketaban. Merriman. A power move to the front of the net. She can't get to. Gagnon. Gagnon has Pru back at the point. Pru has Laplante. Back down low. Gagnon! Ah, nice save there. Prue will get there first. Angelique Prue, she lost it in her feet. Lassard. Florence Lassard. Laplante had pinched down. She went to Prue. Prue, a speculative effort that went just wide. Can't tend. Fresh at legs off the bench. The GGs flying out here tonight. And that one, they'll say that Canton fell on it. And we'll get a whistle. That was probably one of the quickest whistles I've ever seen when uh, the opposing team is trying to pin the puck for a whistle, but a whistle nonetheless, and uh, great offensive zone pressure that we're seeing here very early on by the GTs, and like you said, a very confident group, and that's what that pressure is stemming from. One name we haven't mentioned that I'm sure that you've been wondering where it is is Adrienne Veillette. Veillette now actually playing just down the road at TD Place. Got drafted in the new women's league. She was taken in the ninth round. Big congratulations to her. But a big loss for the Ketaban. Nadeau trying to get it past Reese Mepham. Can't do it. Nadeau will follow it up. Nadeau has Terio going to the front of the net. Good interception there by Mepham, but she didn't even know that Terio was actually back door. That one, arms up for icing, and the puck will go the length of the ice. 11.41 to go in the first period. An action-packed first period, might I add. It has definitely been a good pace, and especially considering it's the first game, right, of the regular season, home opener for the GGs. You know, a little bit of rust, right, just like any time you have a first game of the season early on, but I think both teams are looking fast. Their transition game is strong. It's just those breakout opportunities are a little bit sloppy still, but they will absolutely get better on both sides as the season goes on. And Brianna, I think that we can agree as it's a Kataban player hitting the ice. Fobera! Cannon of a shot that Katarams wide. That the GGs have really made an emphasis over the years to go out, get some players who have a little bit of pop, have a little bit of pace. We've seen we've seen Healy, we've seen Merriman, we've seen Florence Lessard and Bill Adeau. Last year's recruit on it now. It's been a conceded effort here by the University of Ottawa. Bilado has the puck poked off her stick. She twists and turns away from Faubert. Clavella centering pass. It's picked off by Picard. Back the other way they come. Here's Raphael Pouliot. Pouliot to Roulon. Roulon, a backhand shot that's steered aside by Sarazan. Pouliot back to Fontaine. Fontaine to Pouliot, but it never was, wasn't able to connect with her. Her opposite number will skate around, pick it up, and chip it, chip it forward. It's a Todd. A Todd, a career year, a career year last year. Eight goals, 15 assists. Her and Biesenthal stapled at the hip, and what a fantastic season they had. Keep in mind, none of those were power play goals. Gigi's power play was operating at 4% last year. Etienne, a shot swallowed up by Sarah Zan. I mean, as for the power play, at 4% last year, the bright side is for the Gigi's that really the only option should be to improve on that 4%, you would hope. But, you know, I'm sure that uh, head coach Steph McHugh, along with Greg Bowles and the other assistant coach that they acquired, uh, you know, this year, I'm sure they put some effort and focus onto the, um, the power play opportunities. Because in this type of league, just like any league, but really in this league, those are huge opportunities that you have to capitalize on. Every game matters. 
And you think back to that overtime period as Charlie Healy back with a vital stick lift there. Centering pass, Fontaine the wrong hand initial twist and fan on the puck. Spinning at TA, a shot that's blocked by Prue. Good stick opportunities there by the GGs as they didn't allow shots to go to the net. Here comes Alyssa Biesenthal buzzing up the ice. Mississauga Ontario native cuts to the inside. Biesenthal, a shot that blazes high and wide. A Got a deflection on its way. There by Biesenthal looks skywards as she was headed back to the bench for a change. Onto the ice steps, Catherine Berkby. We'll see when the crowd realizes she's out there. There we go. There we go. Charlie Healy tries to dump it in. It's only as far as Lefebvre. Lefebvre to Garon. Garon stops up. Lefebvre, long shot on it, never made its way through. Garon. Garon scored the overtime winner to send the Catabans to the RSEQ final. That one against the Concordia Stingers. La Plante, she mishandles it. La Roche. Nado! Saved by Sarazan. It's been a mighty start here by the Cégep Limoilou product. She's had big shoes to fill this year, early to book, graduating out of this program. But Mejica Sarazid has been a star since she started. I was going to say, you know, every time that she was in between the pipes last year, she always had a pretty solid performance and, uh, you know, never really, you know, let the GGs down there for sure. So just, just building off of that. Taylor Scott will chase after Nadeau. Nadeau gets the better of her. Scott pushes her into the boards. Here's Minville. Minville down low. Scott, touch pass, Berkby, a trickler. That Racine couldn't get up, and then a few extracurriculars as Merriman took a shot at Racine. Just taking a look at, Ki at Kira Merriman. She's been absolutely electric so far in this game, and I think that that's something we can come to expect, Brianna. You know, like we were saying, she was really impressive in the preseason game that we broadcasted as well and she fit right in and was very confident patient with the puck um, a lot of calmness as we've already seen here tonight I think she's a wonderful addition to the GG's offensive lineup the product from Kaninigat Kaninigat Northwest Territories or sorry none of it Kaninigat none of it rather that one sent forward Justin Peltier, a long shot that's frozen up by Sarah Zan. That was good rebound control there by Sarah Zan as the Montreal team had Tanton heading towards the net. It was a three on two opportunity. So, you know, Krasinski and her defensive partner can only take so much. And she was streaking towards back door, looking for a little bit of a garbage goal there. But Sarah Zan shut the door really well. That one, a shot that I think Sarah Zan saw late. It's able to deflect it aside. Billado behind her own net now. Bilodeau up to Jade Todd. Fontaine slowly is able to get it back to Peltier. Good patience shown by her. And over the line come the Catabam. Reedman on it now. Alex Clavel. Clavel, Pouliot in hot pursuit. It's dangerous pass there as Jade Todd is able to disrupt some of that danger. Been a sloppy couple of minutes after a red hot start for the University of Ottawa. Yeah, I would definitely say there's a bit of a sloppy moment on uh, on each side. And again, it's a lot of the rust that's being shaken off, right? You can do as many preseason games as you want. But. Biladoa shot that's blockered aside by Obrasin. Fontaine is able to get it to Roland. And up comes Jessica Boulanger. The captain is able to smuggle it onto Roulon. Roulon on the backhand. Nice save by Sarazan. Charlie Healy, one of two recruits from the city of Calgary, Alberta. Is able to get it to Biesenthal. Biesenthal ahead of Nadeau. Leaves it for Healy. Boulanger can't get it past Healy. Healy. Healy centering pass. Can't find its target. Laplan. She pinches in. She has Merriman. Laplante, it's loose in front. Taylor Scott steps into that one and sent that one up in. <laughs> sent that one up into the netting. Leaned back and you can see Reese Mepham giving a nice little laugh. Is That's one I think Taylor Scott will want back. I mean, to be fair, I was having a nice 
nice little giggle up here too when I saw how high it went. I mean, different sport and it could have been a good field goal. You know what they say, she was leaning a little too far back on that one. And as you hear the crowd, Catherine Burke be on the puck again. You'll always know, folks at home, when Catherine Burpee is on the ice. Just going to throw that out there. Starting at first line center tonight in between Taylor Scott and Kara Merriman. Tariq Metham steps up. And it's on to Minville. Minville turns it over. Etier in on the breakaway and loose hands from her. Oh, the Gigi's got bailed out of that one. The most dangerous player for the Keta Ben had eyes for goal and forgot about the puck. Bergby with a great play there. Lassard gets a fistful from Faubert. Faubert trying to pick the corner. Oh. Nice save by Serazan. Picard, she leaves it and there goes Lalonde. Lalonde has Florence Lassard. Lassard and Gagnon. It's a, two on, it's a three on two and cleaned out. The GGs will go to the power play. Lassard. Krasinski, Krasinski, it's tipped and Rasin will freeze that one up. Baugh interference the call. As it's Poirier Lao who heads to the box. The GGs, their first power play opportunity of the night. Yeah, and that was a great play made possible by Kanyo streaking towards the net, but then Lassard you saw it being back as the trailer, and that was definitely an interference call as Kanyo was nowhere even near the puck. Number 20. Good opportunity here for the GGs to try out their power play. Maybe operate this year at a little bit more than 4%, but hey, you can only go up from here. And you're just seeing. Beatrice Billado, or you just saw Beatrice Billado. She's the danger man on this power play. She can play the net front, but she loves to bounce out into the bumper slot. The GGs need to get some better movement on their power play this year. We talked about it 4% last year. Jade Todd. Todd to Biesenthal. Biesenthal. She has a couple options. Lex to go back to the half wall. And dispossessed there. Tried to do a little too much. I find the GGs right now, what we've seen in just the first 30 seconds of this power play is that they're trying to move too much instead of letting the puck move for them. Jay Todd will help that one on its way. Picard will get there first and hammer it around the boards and out. Looks like the second unit's getting ready to go is onto the ice now and it's turned over. Empty net and Etier loses the handle again. Two golden opportunities. Wow, GGs are really lucky to not have had a goal against on those couple of plays, especially this last one. Here's Berkby. Berkby to the outside, cutting into the net, Catherine Berkby. What an individual effort there. True. And Merriman caught unaware. It was Melanie Lafebvre who was in on the attack, Pouliot. Jesus. The GGs are all over the place. <laughs> that one sent the length of the ice. Sarah Zen will go out to collect. It's a hectic moment for the University of Ottawa. Here's Merriman. Minville just able to hold the line. Merriman to Healy, this rookie power play unit. Merriman. Merriman down low, Healy. Merriman wants it back as Porilla, who steps out of the box. Ariane Minville, a shot into the blockers. Ariane Gagnon tries a toe drag and Angelique Prue holds the line. Merriman. Good use of her body to shield the puck. Jessica Boulanger is able to get it out, but Porilla, who can't get it all the way down the ice as Jessica Boulanger will fight it over the line. Boulanger, a one-woman wrecking crew out there. I mean, we're not really shocked. She was the same way even last year as well. Definitely a danger player on U of M. She's one of those players who you feel can get away with a little bit of stuff. She's not the biggest player, but a player who's not afraid to get involved in the rough stuff. You think to some of the players, though, that the Ketaban have lost. Kaylee Quinnack, the first one that comes to my mind, a player who's never afraid to assert their style of play. Florence Lassard is able to get it over the line, though. The GGs want to make a change. Krasinski smacks it forward and 
Loche can't get it over the line. Kate McLean pokes it forward. Faubert twisting, turning, trying to elude a couple of GGs. Biesenthal in on the forward check. Faubert still on it. Faubert is cleaned out and the GGs are going to take a penalty there. Body contact, the call. That one. One that the rookie will want back. Mele, Mele, Mele Le Plant heads to the box. conference but especially with this team as well has always been very physical you need to rise to that occasion but also being mindful of how you're using your body and how you're throwing it around very new look penalty kill for the University of Ottawa as Alex Clavel can't get the puck out it's helped on its way by Beatrice Billado and Fourier Lao will go back to get it we highlighted it before we'll highlight it again this is a power play that's missing the ability of Adrienne Veillette very much new luck as Jade Picard walks forward. She had two goals against the University of Ottawa in the final game, both of those coming on the power play. Reese Mepham will be able to, or sorry, that's Alex Clavel who will be able to clear the puck. Kylie Lalonde out there, and Florence Lassard, the fourth penalty killing forward for the University of Ottawa. Nadal, that one over the line, that one. This one that stayed in and Sarah Zen will freeze it up and Boulanger went right to the net. Florence Lassard bowled her over. It looks like we'll get nothing. I mean, there was a very similar play at the other end where uh, one of the GGs was taken down too. So I feel like the official was going, you know what? It's a wash now. You got one, you got one. Like that's it. We're into the final minute here. First period action is La Forge and Faubert play catch down low. Etier. Faubert, Faubert. Shot and it's kicked almost in. That one, just good positioning by Mejica Sarazan. That was definitely good tracking by Sarazan. And uh, I think Reedman had a little bit of a heart attack there where it went off her skin. It's one of the worst things as a defenseman where it just goes off of you. But thankfully for them, uh, you know, did not go in as Sarazan did a good job tracking. Catherine Berkby. Is able to win the draw and get it out only as far as Kellyanne LaForge. Faubert will dump it in with 38 seconds to go. Minville tries a reverse. Doesn't come off for her and the Ketaban back on it now. Faubert is going to walk, take her time. Faubert, cross ice, Fontaine, Berkby. She's in a foot race. LaForge will beat her there. That one helped on its way by Etia, who's had two golden opportunities in this period. Dumped the length of the ice by Reese Mepham. And that'll do it. First period of action done here at the Minto Sports Complex. The GGs and Ketaban nodded at zeros. No, though for no lack of trying, Brianna and I will be back in a few moments time to wrap up the first period and get you second four, the second period of action here at the Minto Sports Complex.
Welcome back for the second period of action here at the Minto Sports Complex. My name, Declan Abarp. Joining me, as always, Brianna Newell. Brianna, a lot of action to break down in the first period. A lot to look forward to here in the second. But before we do, two quick birthday shout-outs. The first one playing in this game today. Lori, uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Emily Porielo, her birthday tonight. Uh, so a big happy birthday. Sorry. Lorianne Etier, it's her birthday tonight. Very happy birthday. And next, Gigi Taylor Sims, it's her birthday as well. So if Taylor, you're watching this one, a very happy birthday to you, Gigi's. And the Ketaban's going to look for some presence here in the second period. The game is still goalless, though not for lack of trying. Two golden opportunities for Etier to score on her birthday. We'll look for a couple opportunities for her and the Gigi's. Yet to generate a golden opportunity, but a lot of sniffs around the ice in the Catherine Berkby fan club at it again. And the GGs are starting off the period shorthanded for about 15 seconds there. Right, you are. It's Laplante who is in the box for a interference penalty. This is the only game in show, the only show in town tonight. Is that one centering pass and one that went just. Australia Ketaban's a golden opportunity, Nadeau. Good and stick it was there by Merriman as Nadeau was trying to get a shot off there. Merriman who had rushed out of, rushed off the benches. La Planta changed and Merriman forced into action again. Scrambled play and it's in. Terrio opens the scoring 38 seconds into the second period. That was just a bit of a breakdown there in the GG zone. You know, they were just finishing killing off the penalty. You had Mayel going off into the bench. You had Merriman coming out there, trying to get settled in the positions, and it was just a scramble puck that was left. And Terrio was really just unattended and kind of forgotten about and it was able to go and just put that in the back of the net behind Sarazan. Can't really blame Sarazan for, for that goal. Laplante was out of the box, so the Ketaban's not awarded with a power play goal, but very much the product of the discombobulation on the power play. Lefebvre over the line now as the Ketaban's come again. Laloche. GG start back the other way. Florence Lassard to Kylie Lalonde. Can they answer back right away? Lalonde, a shot, a kick save, and Obrasin unable to corral the loose puck that was sitting in the slot, but a good back check. There and a chance the other way, Laloche. Laloche, a shot, a kick saved by Sarazan. End to end action. Gagnon, Gagnon a toe drag. And not on the same page with Kylie Lalonde. Boulanger and Nadeau get the assist on the goal. Laplante over to Clavel. Clavel, tons of space. Laplante steps forward. A shot. It's another juicy rebound that no GG can take control of. Pru fans on that one. And Garon can only get as far as Clavel. Villadeau and Clavel work to get that one deep. Picard. Laplante have been very impressed as the Cataban who spills behind the net. It was... Audrey Gervais, she hits the ice again. Clavel, Clavel a shot, it's blocked by Gervais. Picard, looking for Garand out of her reach and icing waved off. Icing waved off very quickly, it was the hustle of Juliette Roulon. That one. Saucer pass looking for Pouliot. That one won't find her, and this time Icena is called. What we've seen in the first period and what we've seen here, I don't think I've ever seen quicker whistles for anything. Very, very quick whistles. But you know what, it's a lot, it's a result also of the GGs going back very lackadaisical to their zone and uh, didn't even notice that a U of M player was on their tails trying to beat out the icings. GGs an opportunity to reassert offensive zone pressure. Kate McLean is muscled out of it by Pouliot. Hacked right where, hacked right back where it came from by Minville. 
Drop pass by Kellyanne Laforge. Boulanger is stood up. Pouliot. Watched by Mepham. Pouliot. On to Laforge. Laforge up to Boulanger. Boulanger. An offside there as Pouliot just couldn't keep the puck from crossing the line. So after the goal, it's been a little stop start. I think that favors the game of the Caraban, a less free-flowing game. If you're just joining us after a little break, you were out to get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. The Caraban's opened the scoring very quickly, 38 seconds into the second period. GG's have faltered. And it's been the Catabans that seem to have the speed as Berkby on it now. Berkby, Prue doesn't get a stick on it, they'll say, and Merriman is able to beat out the icing. Well, and also the fact that Oberstein came out to play the puck. If she didn't, Merriman would have got there first. I'm just saying it negates the icing. Turned oh. over, Taylor Scott. Taylor Scott, a shot that's blocked. Scott had Merriman joining her. Elected to go herself as Picard drives Prue into the boards. It's a two on one. Lassard, Lassard and Lalonde. Lassard trying to pick the corner. And it's frozen up and Lassard cleaned out. Lassard looked like she was thinking shot all the way and Racine read her. Yeah, and it was a nifty little play there. She did make a move around the defenseman who had kind of slid over a little bit more and actually cheated, which kind of gave a little bit more room to Lalonde who was streaking towards the net. So it could have been a good backdoor play. As you mentioned, Obrasin really cut down on that angle for the shot on Lassard. I think Lassard's uh, stick-handedness is also playing against her. The lefty coming down favored the shot. She just couldn't get the lift on it. Obrasin, not the biggest of goalies. One banked out and Reese Mepham will, after a friendly bounce, find Gagnon. Perello. Laho to the backhand. Cut move to the center, Sarazen freezes it up. We didn't see too much of Porielo in the first period. That one, very attentive goalkeeping. Well, Dad, and you know, Pariela, who really did a good job use, utilizing her speed as she was matched up against Mepham. And Mepham is a, a taller individual, and I find last year as well as this year, her foot speed is a little bit slower. And so transitioning to move from skating backwards to turn and keep someone to the outside, I would say needs to a little bit work because Pariela, who was able to exploit that. Clavel and Todd, Bilodeau in support, three on two, cross ice pass. And that one just out of the reach of Bilodeau. GG's have had their opportunities. Just haven't been able to really generate anything on net. Terrio is given a shove and she'll fall into the boards awkwardly. Gervais. Gervais creates plenty of space. Gervais a shot. That one beats Sarazan clean and the Caravan are up by two. I'm not sure exactly what happened within the five GGs that were on the ice, but Gervais picked up the puck down below even the goal line and came up to the point. And she had all kinds of time and space as all five GGs really collapsed into the slot there. No one was contending uh, Gervais for the shot. No one's putting any pressure. And I'm not even sure if Sarah's I even saw it, quite honestly, as it just went right through underneath the arm there. Gervais was able to walk right down Main Street and Fire that one into the back of the nets. Right down King Edward. Right down, right down Bank Street. <laughs> Taylor Scott trying to get the puck going in the right direction. Stopped at the line and Angelique Pru forced backwards. Pru looking to improve upon last season. Only one goal for the GG's defender with a breakout rookie campaign. Nine goals in her rookie campaign. Only one last year. Garon. A centering pass that never found its marker, and Taylor Scott will chip it forward. Charlie Healy will chase after it. One lost in the feet of Picard, she was bailed out. Laplan, Biesenthal, and she'll dump it in. Gigi's needing the change. Burke beyond to the ice, and 
dispossesses a Keraban, but turned right back over. Aloche. Pouliot tipped forward. She'll chase after this one. Minville there first. Arian Minville blows a tire. She's able to get it forward to Merriman. Merriman has her pocket picked. Pouliot's been everywhere tonight. Somehow she managed to stay on it. Minville is slow to get off the ice. She looks like she's hurting. Didn't even attempt to make a play on the puck, which is not a good sign. Roland looking for Pouliot. Reedman is able to get it to center. Nadeau. Back to her defensive partner, Laforge. Good stick there by Merriman to break up the play back to Nadeau. She'll try and create something all by herself and dispossess. Boulanger back in support. Reedman can't hold the line and instead of turning it over, she'll dump it in. Laforge, she's hacked down and an easy penalty. Over the line, here's Roulon. Roulon trying to find an angle. The Catavans set to go to work again once the GGs touch it up. Florence Lessard will go over, touch it up, and with 12 minutes, 29 seconds left to go in the second period, GGs will be shorthanded again, that one. Florence Lessard who goes off for the trip. Yeah, and Lessard knew as soon as uh, the Caravan player went down, she knew that she was getting a call for that one as you saw her reaction to it. Uh, but, you know, no arguments there. She knew she tripped her. So GGs are back on the PK, and again, they really are needing to get through this PK unscathed, especially being down already 2 nothing. GGs do have a uh, penchant for a goal and six men on the ice. As the puck was dropped, we'll redo the faceoff. It's Fulbert who got caught with it. GG's asking for a penalty. But all that happens is a tossing from the draw. Laforge touches it on. Down low, Garon. Garon has Pouliot. She never found her. Garon. These are for Lefebvre. Pouliot. Raphael Pouliot. And Alex Clavel makes no mistake of a loose pass that was intended for Pontan and sends it the length of the ice. Beatrice Billado will head after the GGs, get a much needed change. Pouliot. Lefebvre. Lefebvre is hacked down. The arms stay down and that one offside. Ooh, that's lucky for Club Ellis. That absolutely could have been a tripping call had the officials decided to call it. Kappa Saxing, Ontario native. Just north of Sudbury. Recipient in back-to-back -back years of the Melissa Kingsley Award. Alex Clavel. Pereira, who over the line, she's worked over by Berkby. Mafum turns it over behind the net, and Kate McLean, a foot race with Nadeau. She gets there first, a minute and 10 seconds to go. Berkby, she looks up, kills a little bit more time, and then dumps that one down on Torasin. Pereira, who back to set up. This Caraban's power play was ranked second in the, second in the, in the conference last year. Though not even sniffing the 25% that the Concordia Stingers were operating at. Stingers beat the McGill Martlets in their first game of the season. 4-1 to the score. Pori Laho is able to muscle it on net. Jessica Boulanger. Picard. Picard is Nadeau. Back to Boulanger. Boulanger. Nadeau! A rifle of a shot! And the game is 3-1. to one. Game has got away from the GGs here in the second period. Yeah, it's definitely swinging in the Carabas' favor. Again, we got a lot of time left in this hockey game overall for both teams, but that was really a, a beautiful pass over to Nadeau. Perfectly placed. You can tell they practiced it, uh, you know, on the, uh, the practice that they had leading up to this game. And I was curious to see why there was no GG PK or shifting over to take away that kind of bank opportunity, that one-timer opportunity with a shot like that as well, as I'm sure they would have done some video beforehand to know how dangerous Nadeau is on that flank. She's not a new, no. a new figure in this league, the veteran defender. This her fifth year of eligibility. She's, got a, she's always had a cannon of a shot, and that one very telegraphed. Very much, yeah. 
And he knew it was going high too, just from the way she was winding up. It was gonna be a bullet. Prue trying to get the GGs going the other way. Back to five on five, obviously, with the goal. Sarazen will settle it down for Laplan. Laplan not afraid to go for a skate, will carry this one over the line. Dipsy doodles, Bilado! Oh, sorry, Florence Lassard with beautiful opportunity. That one created almost out of nothing by, by Mayo Laplan. That one put into the corner. The GGs hoping to go to work. The GGs were the best second period team in the conference last season. They outscored teams 25 to 3 in the second period. That one a stretch pass. Laloche to the forehand. It's sitting on the doorstep. Sarazen has no clue where it is. The whistle finally goes. And oh, the GGs almost gave up a fourth. Laloche just burst through the middle. And Sarazen just able to stretch and keep that one out. Exactly which defenseman it was. It might have been Kathleen Riemann actually. And Riemann usually is so steady, so well positioned. On that one though, I found that she was a little bit too far over and too much in front. And she allowed La Roche to really get in a little bit behind her to allow that like that breakaway essentially. Nadeau La Forge blocked by Healy. Pouliot, Boulanger spinning, trying to find some space. Pouliot and it's on to Serazan who will freeze it up. These two teams have uh, exchanged a few extra correct extracurriculars after the whistles. Don't know if they're planning dodgeball or exchanging phone numbers, but it's been uh, it's had a physical edge this one. Well, I mean, again, not surprised. This conference has so few teams that you play each one so often. I mean, you're gonna absolutely have some rivalries there. There's no love lost between these two teams by any means. And these two teams have been in the playoffs in back-to-back -back years. It's been a uh, it's that one. Hoofed up into the rafters. Sarazen has no clue where it went, and the refs will say it hit the rafters. I think Get the up. refs also just lost sight of it, honestly, as they couldn't see where it had gone. Ketabans knocked the GGs out this year. They knocked them out the year prior as well. Like I said, no love loss between these two teams. Montreal obviously hosted the national championships last year. This year, the women's national championship will be in Saskatoon. The trip to the Prairies is Pouliot. Just couldn't connect with the centering pass for Moulin. Been very impressed by that rookie. Mayel Leplant puts it into a space as Michaela Krasinski on it now. The blender has really come out for Chelsea, uh, for, sorry, for Stephanie McKeo. So we've seen a few different bodies as Merriman trying to connect with Kate McLean. It's disrupted on its way, and Oulon back the other way. A dangerous pass that Laplante just can't keep in. Pouliot, dispossessed by Laplante. Laplante to Todd. Jay Todd, time, space, a pass, and that one that Billa Doe wasn't ready for. But that was absolutely the right play by Jay Todd. She had everyone going towards her, and she had Billa Doe absolutely wide open, and a left-handed shot to boot. Billa Doe was not ready, though, to receive that pass. Stick was not even on the ice. A beautiful play by Jade Absolutely Todd. Beautiful. Yeah. She had over a scene going her way as well, so Bilodeau would have probably had a wide open net. I want a long dump in on Serazan. She'll keep play alive. Seven minutes, 39 seconds left to go in the second. Reedman goes cross ice. That one off the boot of Jade Todd. Gervais chips it forward. Etier. You know, the signs were there that the GGs weren't as, um, what's the right word that I'm trying to find? The GGs weren't as sturdy as they looked in the first period. Etier, two golden opportunities, including one, an empty net that she whiffed on. Krasinski will backhand that one in, and the GGs will chase after it. Kylie Lalong can't get there first, and Poirier Lehu back the other way. Touch forward by Etier. The arm's up for icing. Etier is a step on Prue, and 
She's not happy with that one. Icing the call. Go back down all the other way. Some tired bodies out there for the Kedah band. So real opportunity here for the University of Ottawa. Huge opportunity for the GGs here, especially if they get their cycle going and they find the open player with, you know, slower legs for the caravan because they are tired. Someone undoubtedly is going to be able to find an opportunity in the slot area. But they really got to get some more shots. I found the GGs haven't had that many opportunities on Old Racine so far throughout this game. You can't score if you don't shoot. And Racine, a goal you need to get shots on. Can they get one here? Lalon twisting, turning, trying to find an angle. Put that one into a space in between Krasinski and Lassard. Finds its way back to her. Lassard, a chance now, and that one just dragged wide. It's a nice pass by Florence Lassard. She found Ariane Gagnon. GG seem to have the cycle established here. Laplante is able to find some space. A shot, that one. That Racine swallows up. A good chance there, but the seas opened up, and Racine was able to see that one the whole way. Right, I was going to say, you know, it's a good play made by Maya Laplante. Instead of, you know, the typical defensive move when the puck is being run around the boards and shooting it back to him, she actually corralled it, turned towards the middle, which I don't think the caravan expected, opened up that whole middle of the ice, but there was no traffic in front of Racine. She saw it the entire way, and it was right in the crest. And the, Ker the caravan have always done a fantastic job of making sure their goalies see as Peltier rams into Reedman. Canton. Looking for Picard. Picard just sent into an area. And the physical stuff brewing in front of the net. Here's Biesenthal. Has, haven't seen too much of her. Lisa Biesenthal trying to find an angle. To Charlie Healy, she rings iron. I think that was actually Taylor Scott that uh, had that cannon of a shot there. It was a good drop pass made. It was good timing on it as well. You know, you saw, I think it was Biesenthal who was carrying the puck, and she waited, waited, drew a defenseman over to her, which allowed a little bit more space between her and then Taylor Scott, and Taylor Scott got an absolute cannon off of the crossbar there. Well, she dialed it in the first time, sent it about a mile high, and so then... So a little bit closer now, you know? This one she, a charm. This one she rang iron done a fantastic job of creating space for herself. A player who really had it going last season. She gets hurt in the Colonel by Classic. Comes back, makes an impact in the playoffs. This here's Garon. Garon trying to pick an angle. Terrazan equal to it. I'm expecting a very big season from Taylor Scott. She loves to play GG's hockey. She plays the right way. She hustles and she often gets rewarded. La Roche on it now. Garon. Is able to find La Forge and Serazan equal to it. That was a heck of a pass there by Garon. Cross body, cross ice. I was gonna say at the end of the day, you know, the Caravan have done a really good job this second period of getting those passes through, right? Not getting the block, not getting them intercepted. And you know, on the flip side, it makes you wonder, can the GGs do a little bit better job defending and getting sticks in lanes? Chance now back for back for the GGs the other way, and it's sloppy play there by Jade Todd. Lefebvre can't get past Krasinski. Lefebvre forced backwards. LaForge. LaForge has got on. Reedman had stepped up, given some space. Nado to the backhand, a centering pass. Cleaned out in front. Reedman got back and just got the stick on Lefebvre. That was a great defensive play by Reedman there. She absolutely saved a goal. It was a wide open net, and Sarazan was way on the other side. GGs are scrambling. Lalochet. Boulanger. Boulanger, a weak shot that Sarazan didn't get everything of. Jade Todd. Todd looks up. She sees she has Billado. Billado, that one just out of her reach. It's ambitious there. Roulon. Pouliot can't touch it past Mepham. Clavel. Shot on goal in that one. Easy for Obrasin. That one was Erdogan Gagnon. Florence Lessard just directing traffic out there. Seems like there's going to be a timeout called by the GGs. And 
you know what, I like this move. I like this move by head coach. It seems like your team is scrambling a little bit during the second period, whereas they weren't during the first period. Calling a timeout, settling them down, you know, resetting the game plan, so to speak, with the players that are on the ice, the players that are on the bench, just overall as a whole, get back to playing Gigi's hockey, as you see Steph McHugh really just, you know, speaking to the team here during this timeout. And, you know, this face-off is, is a very big one. The GGs have succeeded when they've been able to establish some zone time. You see Reese Mepham and Angelique Pru, who are out there, two players who definitely have a cannon of a shot. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what play that GG's new assistant head coach, Jennifer Wakefield, who comes in to fill in for Stephanie McKeo, handling the offense, draws up. Yeah. I was going to say, it seemed like she was very busy drawing out there. They were all very intently listening. So definitely a special play coming up here on the faceoff. They can win it. It's a scramble draw. So all of that drawing for nothing. Pouliot had taken off looking to escape the zone. The GGs, though, looking to pin the Ben. Gagnon has cleaned out the arms. Will stay down as back to Gervais. Gervais rings it around for Roulon. That's what the Ben have done a fantastic job of clearing their zones, clearing their lines with those cross-ice passes that are very affirmative. They seem to have an awareness of where all of them are on the ice at all times. Yeah. And uh, just on another note, I was watching Ariane Gagnon as you know that cross-ice pass was happening by the caravan. She did not like the way she was taken out. You can still see the skid marks there on the ice. And she actually lined up that Carabao player. She has to be extremely careful and keep her cool about her if the GGs are going to have an opportunity to come back in this game. Porello. It's watched by three GGs. Picard has a lane open up a shot, and Sarah Zan is able to stretch out and grab that one. And Uses good. all five foot four of her frame. I was going to say, a good rebound control there done by Sarah Zan. She had two Caravan players right on her doorstep, and the G there was no GG defending player there. Whether it was a forward defenseman, there was no defender there to help her out. That should never happen in defensive zone coverage. Puck loose in the slot. Puriela Ho to the backhand and we'll do it all over again. That play was weird. It was almost like the GGs thought, okay, we have possession. We're going to just fly the zone. And two players were already so far past the puck and yet it wasn't fully in control of their teammate. And Caravan ended up actually recovering the puck and had that opportunity there on Sarah's end. Two players are already gone. Terry Owen, Villa Doe into the faceoff draw, it finds the way to Clavel, and Clavel, Bilodeau pokes it forward, she has a step, it's a three on one. Bilodeau looking for Clavel, it never found her, and Todd will hammer it back into the zone. Faubert drops it off. That one to center icing, waved off as Reese Mepham skates back under the watchful eye of Purello. It's on it now. Sloppy play by the GGs. Picard. Backhand dumps that one in. Mepham. Todd. Up to Berkby who leaves it behind. Followed up by McLean who will dump it in. The Ketaban easily established possession. LaForge. Nado. Veteran defender a bounce pass that Angelique Pru read poorly. Peltier. Peltier, a tight angle shot. That one off the mask of Sarazan and out. Angelique Prue took a bet and it's a read that almost came back the other way. And I understand a little bit, um, you know, from Prue's perspective as a defenseman, your team's down 3 0. It's a couple minutes left in the game. You want to be a little bit more aggressive, but you still have to be smart with the choices you're making because you don't want to make it a larger lead than what it is. Peltier with a nifty little deflection and almost trickled in the bottom corner. Nadeau and McLean get into it. Comes the way of the Ketaban and Prue back to collect. A minute, 53 seconds left to go in the second period. Merriman. The energy that this game had in the first period has tapered off much to the benefit of the Ketaban. The three goals they've scored in this period have been a major help to that as Angelique Prue is able to find... McLean, but the GG's forced backwards again. Laplante. Merriman. 
Controlling in a cul-de-sac and the GGs are changing. For 10, a shot that's easily corralled by Sarah Zam. Bad change, tired legs. Very tired legs. And again, we always talk about that second period change. It's always a long change. You have to be smart. You can't change all five people or even four people at a time. I know when we did it, it was one defense at a time. You shift over, and that's how you eventually change your lines. I mean, it is not a free-for-all all at once. Krasinski closed off quickly. He's able to find its way to Charlie Healy. Healy to Biesenthal. Biesenthal trying to gain the zone, and Gervais holds it up. The final minute of play in the second period here. Lalo Shea is able to get it over to Garon. Garon leaves it for Lefebvre. Lefebvre, touch pass, Fontana. Shot that never made its way through. Lefebvre. And here's Charlie Healy, 30 seconds. She's Taylor Scott with her. Two on two. Charlie Healy. I don't know... What she was quite trying to do there. Still needs to learn the ways of the Minto Sports Complex boards. Angelique Cruz scores! A play out of nothing, and the GGs draw one back before the end of the period. I mean, in a way, it kind of all started from that very interesting play by Healy and dumping it down around, and uh, the puck ended up Right in that slot, you actually had three GG players that were all converging towards it. You had a left-handed in Reese Meffin, a left hand in, Le in Kylie Lamont, and then you had Angelique Prue coming on her off wing, so she was more towards the middle with her shot hand, and she just let it rip. It's a nice shot by Angelique Prue, that player that we got used to in her rookie season here. Her first goal of the season ties her record for the goals she scored last year, the points she scored last year player who plays on confidence and that a big one is there goes the buzzer Gigi show a sign of life in the dying embers the score three to one Brianna and I will be back in just a moment's time to break down the second period and get you ready for the final period of action here
Welcome into the Minto Sports Complex. Declan Barb, Brianna Newell for our first intermission report of the season on the home opener night. Brianna, this not going the way the GGs would have wanted it to. Three quick goals by the Montreal Cataban have brought us to a score of three to one. Brianna, the problem, defensive zone breakdowns for the University of Ottawa. Yeah, there were definitely some breakdowns there that I think could have been avoided. You also had tired legs out there. And then let's throw in a penalty kill at the same time, right? So it was kind of that perfect storm. Couple, couple of factors, I think. And again, I can't say for sure. Um, you know, I'm not in the dressing room. I haven't, you know, been around the team or anything. But at this point, what it's really looking like is a couple of things. A bit of a lack of communication, um, a bit of you know newer players that you have. And so what I was thinking is maybe you have a couple of you know forwards that are a little bit newer, right? They're newer to the game plan, newer to be able to buy in and understand what the game plan is each and every time, especially when it's against a team like this that's oh so dangerous. And then you have defense too that you know you have some newer individuals, and sometimes there is just a miscommunication between those newer players with the more veteran players, right? So it's again, it's the first game of the season. There is going to be a learning curve, 100%. There will be improvements. But right now, that's really what those goals have stemmed from. And I think of the uh, the PK goal, or the power play goal, I should say, by Nadeau. And like I said, I don't think I've ever seen an instance where the PK from the GGs we've seen, that there was a player wide open on the flank there. Like, that should never be happening. There should always be a GG player that is right there, kind of in there, facing either getting a stick out or a body's in lane. And that didn't happen here. So it was like someone was caught way on the other side. That an absolute howitzer by Nadeau. She roofed it, but a very telegraphed play and the GGs yeah. just caught out of possession. The GGs do get a late one to give them a brief sign of life. A real breakdown on the Ketaban side, something we didn't yeah. see all too much, but caused by a strange play by Charlie Healy. And with 12 seconds left, Angelique Prue gets her first of the season. And it's funny, we were actually wondering, I think you mentioned it during the broadcast of, you know, I'm not really sure what she was trying to do there, but at the end of the day, she got it in deep. So it doesn't matter, I think, what she meant to do, or even if it was a conscious decision, she got it in deep and allowed her Gigi's teammates to go in and forecheck and create that pressure, which seemed like it caused a very odd turnover right in the slot. They're kind of in between the two defense. And like I mentioned, you had three Gigi's all just converging on this puck. You had two left-handed shots, which was Lalonde and Mepham. And then you had Angelique Brew coming from the left-hand side as a right-handed shot. And I would almost say that that's a better option as opposed to the left hands because she's been able to turn her body and she's more positioned towards the middle where her stick also was and where the puck was coming. She was really able to do a good job of just kind of corralling it, catching it, and shooting it right away instead of taking it stick handling, looking for a lane and what have you. And she definitely had the open lane and I don't even think Cressine saw it. But that's what needs to be done. I found there weren't really a lot of shots by the GGs that period on Resting. They didn't really test her all that much. And that one was a perfect opportunity, and she didn't even see it. But that's what you need to do with Racine. If she's able to see it, nine times out of ten, she's going to stop it, unless it's an absolute cannon of a shot. And you really got to credit the way that the Ketaban have been playing. It's been a fantastic game by the likes of, I mean, we've come, become used to it, Faubert, Picard. Uh, Gervais, who have been fantastic tonight, but the forwards as well, not being afraid to get in those shooting lanes. The GGs have a lot of work to do to drag themselves out of this two-goal deficit. Brianna, we'll be back in about 11 minutes time to break down the third, to get you set for the third period of action here at the Minto Sports Complex. You don't want to miss this one.
Welcome back into the Minto Sports Complex. Lech and Barb and Brianna Newell moments away from third period action. Here the GGs trail by two, score three to one. That thanks to a very late goal by Angelique Pru, her first goal of the season, obviously, but ties last season. Geez, have a lot of work to do. Mejica Sarazen has been stellar in this game. She'll need to come up big in this one. Brianna, a player for the University of Ottawa GGs, who you think can spark something here in the third. Beatrice Billado is, um, you know, someone who has always played with a lot of grit. She brings a lot of energy to the GG squad, and she could be a difference maker for sure in this third period, especially just spearheading the GG's four check, which is one of their main things that they're known for, is their four checking ability. And so I find it's been a little bit lackluster here this evening, not through, not, not from like a lack of trying, I would say, but just more so from almost an energy perspective and just good defensive zone coverage and defensive zone you know, um, you know, communication by the caravan, good breakouts, clean breakouts, I would say. Lisa Biesenthal into the dot. Teddy O opposite her. Puck dropped, and here we go. Le Plan tries to force it over the line, and a player who is a very effective four checker in Taylor Scott who sent that one just the other side of the ice. Left Forge is back to get it. Nadeau. That one to lose Poirier Lahou. Mayu Leplan. She's been mighty impressive. She's taken down the arm, stay down. Angelique Prua. Long shot. Kick saved by Racin. Scott. Leplan. Leplan. Scott. Scott Leplan. Prue. Prue. Another speculative shot. That one much easier for Obracin. Good early pressure from the University of Ottawa. And we're going to take a look at number 20. Beatrice Billadeau as she comes on to the ice right now. Brianna, you highlighted her. She led right to that face-off dot and look to spark something here. Transfer from Sejep Limwalu in her second season. She did everything but score last season. Four goals, four assists for her. Could have been credited with many, many more. Long. Chased by Todd. She'll send it cross ice for Pouliot to chase. Greg Bowles has his arms up. The official has their arms up and icing the call. I had my hand up too, Declan. You didn't mention me. <laughs> Not that it does anyone any good up here, but I also had my hand up joining the likes of the official and assistant coach Greg Bowles. Congrats. All on the same page. Congratulations, Brianna. Thank you. It's the little things in life, honestly, you need to take hold of. <laughs> Beatrice Billadeau will win that draw. Alex Clavel on it now, Billadeau. Looking for an option, and Clavel tried to slide that one in through the corner. Bilodeau spins, and Todd will stop on a dime and head back the other way. Fontaine. Drop pass, Gervais, Gervais up to Roulon. She's been mighty impressive in her. Keta Band's debut, and Angelique Pru just offside. Good step up there by Angelique Pru, but just a little bit too far to keep it inside the offensive zone, and it will come outside for a face-off. I have to say, I've been impressed by all of the Caraban's rookies. We see only one of them out on the ice right now, but you think of the play of Kellyanne LaForge. She's been excellent. That won a face-off won by Catherine Berkby. Uh, we haven't seen too much of Mia Dion, uh, but they've been involved as Berkby sends a shot just wide. And it was a nice little backhand pass by Merriman to set up that opportunity. And the night for the rookies to shine. This is Catherine Berkby, the veteran, is out there hunting down Faubert. She pins her man to the boards. That one, I don't know how it ended up on the other side, but two GGs have a coming together, and it's a 2 1 1 the other way. Roulon, Picard, Picard goes herself, blocker save by Sarazan. Mepham starts back out and long, ambitious stretch pass looking for Kali Lalonde. It's picked off by Nadeau. Lefebvre, Lefebvre, Garon. Garon over the line. Walks the line and will send that one in the direction of the goal. It's loose. Nadeau will pick it up. A wraparound! And somehow it stayed out. It was sent across the face of the goal and Serazan somehow didn't kick it in her own net. 
I have no idea how that absolutely stayed out, but uh, GG's are very lucky that it did, and it's still a two-goal uh, deficit instead of three. Flip to center, and Nadeau will take a whack at it. She'll send it the other side of the ice, and Laplante will collect it. I, of all the rookies, I think that she's been the one that has impressed me. She's been so calm on the puck as Maya Laplante heads back to defense. Laloche. Laloche, the space opened up, got on. The teammate sliding through her stick. She never was able to get a shot. Florence Lassard. Head up the whole way. Laplante in behind. She'll go at herself. Lassard trying to center it. No one home. She finds it, her, the puck finds its way back to her. Biesenthal. Biesenthal career year last year. 12 goals. As Catan will dump that one only as far as Reese Mepham. Good Mep reverse there done by Mepham. Biesenthal, a long stretch past Taylor. Scott has kept her momentum going, and Mepham couldn't connect with her. That one, a centering pass that found its way to Biesenthal. Biesenthal has Scott in the middle. Biesenthal trying the wrap around. A power play coming to the University of Ottawa. The puck's still loose. Healy. Reverse. Taylor Scott can't beat Faubert there. And the GGs will head to the power play. A hook. This one, a golden opportunity for a GGs power play that has really struggled. And again, if anyone ever needed a power play goal, it is the GGs right now. You're about, you know, just under 16 minutes left to go in the third period. You're down by two goals. You need to capitalize on this. Biesenthal, Bilodeau, Clavel, the forwards. Jay Todd and Kathleen Reedman on the point. The GGs lose the all-important face-off. Poirier Lahu takes a look up. Jay Todd had pinched down. She bowls over, falls on the puck. It's promising for the University of Ottawa. Reedman. They have possession. She fans on it, and Nadeau will send that one the length of the ice. Right as the GGs thought they were going to get an opportunity to set up. It's cleared. Bilodeau. Will dump this one, a head full of steam, and chase after it. She'll beat Nadeau there. What a hustle by Bilodeau. Todd. Reedman. Clavel. Clavel and Reedman switch places. Todd, time, space. She has Biesenthal. She elects to go at herself. Kathleen Reedman is snuck to the back door, but oh, Brassine aware. But it was a good play there by Jay Todd. Yes, she could have gone down to Biesenthal, but then the question would have been, who is Biesenthal hitting afterwards? Is something bumping? Is someone bumping out of the slot, or is she going to take maybe whatever space is allotted to her and try to stuff it? I mean, a shot on net is never a bad idea. She definitely had Reedman streaking towards Racine as well. Prue. She is lone goal. Laplante. Prue. Touch to Merriman. Prue. Prue. Uh, Pass, Prue, backhand that one. Blocker to side by Obrasin. The GGs maintain the zone. Laplante, Merriman. Merriman doesn't have very many options. She tries a toe drag and can't hold the line. Faubert is down. Looks like she's in some pain. Gagnon, Gagnon, that couldn't get the lift. Faubert's made her way back to the bench. Being attended to by a trainer, we hope all is well. 30 seconds to go. Merriman, Berkby. Berkby to Merriman, Merriman. Take her time, pauses. Looking for a pass, that one, a shot blocked by Nadeau. Mepham to Laplante, Laplante. Merriman, Merriman a shot, that one blocked again by Nadeau. She's taking a beating, sorry that was Pouliot that time. Mepham not on the same page. That one dumped, and that'll do it for the Picard power play. So the GG's 0 for 2 on the day. Much better movement, but just couldn't get an opportunity on Ress in. Kate McLean, Clavel. Over the line she comes. Tries to dipsy doodle past LaForge. Let's find its way back to her. Kellyanne LaForge. Aloche. 
Nice move, gets a little bit of time and space, but it comes to nothing. Bilodeau, 13 minutes to go. If something's gonna happen to, for the GGs, it has to happen soon. Bilodeau, head full of steam. It's closed off immediately by Gervais. Kate McLean sticks on it. Puck can't stay in the zone. Laloche looks up, sees Lefebvre and tries to buy some time. Nadoa shot that was always intended to end up in the other corner. Picard. Lefebvre. Lefebvre and Biesenthal comes the way of Michaela Krasinski, the GG's captain. Krasinski trying to find an angle. She can't clear the zone and skates into, J in, into Taylor Scott. Scott now with it, looking for Healy. It only finds Picard. Ketaban in an offside position, and Healy will just turn that one over. Bray Laho soccers it on to Nadeau. That one can't connect with Etienne. Haven't seen her too much in the in, in the back half of this game. Yeah, I was going to say, Etienne usually very involved in every play. has been pretty quiet so far this game. LaPlante trying to find the way out. Lucky that it comes to Charlie Healy, who will dump that one down and head off for a change. Turned over. LaPlante, she's in by herself. On to Lalonde, who wasn't ready for the shot. But good play there by Mayel LaPlante as she really continued the four check for the GGs as they made a change. Prelo will tumble down to the ice and that one just dumped into space. LaForge, she's eaten a lot of minutes here tonight. Big game for the rookie. Fontan turns it over to Berkby. GGs need to head back in this direction. Rests in and will leave it and Mary Men is able to pick it up. LaForge back on it. Shovels it through. Dion. Dion. Mail Dion. A shot. That one. A tight angle. There was some daylight. Coming together of Mary Men and Akera Ben. I believe that was Justine Peltier in the middle. That one's worked down into the Ketaban zone. Icing waved off as Laplante back to get it. A little lackadaisical as Cartan picks her pocket. Cartan looking for an option, doesn't find one. Laplante. And I feel like Laplante has been on for quite a long shift at this point as I don't think she's changed and then come back on. <laughs> I think she's been out there for a lengthy amount of time. You can see the tired leg she has underneath her as that's a cut and a nice save there by Sarazan. It was Roulon who had found the angle. Clavel will airmail it. That one just picked off by Picard. The, Ketab the GGs have changed defenders. That one just out of the reach of Roulon and will just have enough legs to go for icing. And you can hear the Carabao fans not happy with that call, but I think the Chi-Chi's bench was extremely happy with that as you know, it gives them a, a time in the offensive zone to set up and see if they can get something going, get their cycle going. We're halfway through the third period here and GGs are still down by a two-goal deficit. It's a big shift here. The blender has come out. Scramble draw that will eke its way out to center. Reese Mepham will pick it up and dump it back in. Ariane Gagnon leads the charge. Picard will swing it around only as far as Kate McLean. McLean trying to soccer it on. Finds its way to Lassard. A little bit of time and space along the half wall. That one a deflected shot that will loop over the head of Racine. And a good stick there by the Caravan player. Back to Picard. She has a little bit of time and space. Moves it up to Pouliot. Pouliot has Roland. Roland staring down Mepham. And the puck bobbles off her stick. And Mepham with her long reach is able to get it forward. Gagnon dispossessed immediately by Nadeau. What a gap she has always maintained. One of the best defenders in this division. Fontaine. Head full of speed, a shot. Oh. That one snuck through. Sorry, that was Kellyanne LaForge. LaForge has been all over the place tonight. It's been an incredible debut. Yeah. Taylor Scott in a foot race with Nadeau, and Nadeau, excellent body positioning. Good job protecting the puck there and doing an escape to move the puck on up to her teammate. Taylor Scott had a head full of steam. She did. Here's Nadeau. Nadeau stops. Stopped by the Gigi's captain, though. Biesenthal. To the backhand and will advance through center. Lalonde couldn't hold the line. 
And again, that to me, I'm, I'm going to pick a little bit on Kylie Lalonde is a little bit of laziness. You know, I played the game for a long time. You're ahead of your teammate by that much. You take more open space, take the ice so that you don't go offside. You know, you're down by two goals still. You need every offensive push opportunity. And that would have been a good rush opportunity for the GGs had they stayed onside. Here's Berkby. Can't get the angle. Kate McLean, a nice chip forwards, and the GGs are over the line. That one into the feet of Berkby, and an almost an, an awkward bounce. Berkby tries to wrap around, and stopped by Rasin. Teddy O, dispossessed by LaBlanc. Mepham, eight minutes to go. GGs trail by two. That one rung around the boards. Villado. And Laplante. That one, though, poked harmlessly to Sarazan. Mika Sarazan has been quite good in this one, I think, uh, of all the goals that she would want back. The Gervais one where she was walking down, but that more of a breakdown in communication between her defenders. A clean shot that she saw. You'd favor her in that position, but a rifle. Sarah Zan, though, picking up where she left off last season. Reese Mepham. Todd shovels it forwards. Kick to center. Clark Tan will look for Don in that one, or Dion rather, and that one will go the length of the ice for icing. Villado into the draw. She wins this one. The Gigi's need some very much, ha, have some very much needed offensive zone time. But right as I say that, the puck comes out to center and back to the Gigi zone. Reese Mepham stops on a dime. High up off the boards, but not enough to clear the zone. Reedman. Nice little spin move. And that one deep and head off for a change. Excellent reverse there by Nadeau. Ketaban have played a, a textbook game as that one finds Kylie Lalonde. Can she put a late twist in the tail in that one? With sticks all over her since that one about a foot wide. That one just out of the reach of Justine Peltier. Peltier has Boulanger going to the net. Boulanger, that one just out of her reach. Biesenthal, Lalonde. Can't get it back to Biesenthal. Kettabank's captain now. Over the line, nice move. Stops, looks, spins, pinned. These GGs look tired. Gervais. Gonna survey the ice and move it back on to her captain. Nadeau, Roulon. Rulana shot, a kick save, it's loose. And that one put just wide by Gervais. Airmail pass, Kate McLean on the breakaway. Kate McLean couldn't find the back of the net. It's still loose and then the whistle goes. Obressing down and out. Merriman on the doorstep. That a chance out of nothing for the University of Ottawa. It's an airmail pass that trickled its way onto Kate McLean's stick. One she couldn't bury. Well, and I was going to say, I think this whole play really was a start of that weird sequence of events down at the GG's end where there was, again, another open net opportunity for the Carabao. Michaela Krasinski miscontrols that one, and the puck comes out of the zone. She dumps it right back in, and Faubert back through center. Bilito given a bump. Clavel, Clavel is Krasinski ahead of her. Kayla Krasinski tied up by Faubert. And Garand is able to control it. Lefebvre, over the line, a deflected shot that goes wide. Well, out only as far as Nadeau, who 
Turns the puck over to Jay Todd, but Todd with no support is only able to cause a light stir. Nadeau. Faubert. Four minutes, 45 seconds left to go as Merriman picks this one up. Tries to put the moves on, but disrupted, and Ketaban's happy to just put it out, not for an icing, down the ice and force the GGs to reset. This game has moved into a holding pattern. Can Berkby change the tail? She has the puck poked off her stick. Merriman tackled. Puck's still moving, says the official. It comes out to Nadeau. Nadeau chips it forward. Poirier Laou falls down in a hoof. Laplante trying to center it. No one home. And Fontaine has Poirier Lahou through the middle. Poirier Lahou, the wrong side of Krasinski. Poirier Lahou for four. She misses the net. Wow. <clears throat> that was quite a um, that was quite a breakdown of the GGs there. They gave the puck away in the offensive zone and then uh, was not aware of where they were position-wise defensively. Good job, though, by Sarah Zan, at least tracking the puck across. Three on one. Biesenthal a shot. That one a cannon. Ripped wide. A couple options. Elected to go herself as that one's deflected by Lalonde and over the nets. Cartan will just dump this one in on Sarah Zan. And Sarah Zan happy to keep the play going. Biesenthal, Tom Head is able to get it forward but then can't connect with Taylor Scott who's gassed. That one, the length of the ice. For icing the GGs will be forced back into their zone. Some tired legs out there. Well and that missed pass is actually a good example of what we've seen throughout this entire game from the GGs. A little bit from Caravan as well, but mostly it's been noticeable with the GGs where you know they know where their teammate is but their passing is off. Either it's way too far in front or it's too far behind these simple passes that should be connecting or just not, and that's just a question, a little bit of focus and bearing down on the task at hand. Alon twists and turns to buy some time, a deflection off the jump of Picard will negate icing. Two minutes, 42 seconds left to go. Turned over, Alex Clavel. Clavel over the line, she leaves the puck for Billado. Billado touches it to Clavel. Clavel is taught at the back post, and that one, can't get it on. The GGs have pulled their goalie. Six on five. The so last throw that I see here from Stephanie McYo. GGs trail by two as it's over to Reese Mepham. Mepham to Clavel. Clavel a shot. That one always going wide. Todd to Gagnon. Gagnon is able to move it on to Reese Mepham. Mepham winds, fires, blocked on its way through. Angelique Pru. Prue, no one in front of the net, and she'll ring it around. Todd. It's pinned by Nadeau. Nadeau happy to keep the puck here as the seconds tick away. Gigi's playing against the clock as much as themselves. And see, Gigi's here. I mean, Jade Todd and Bill Nadeau should have been absolutely in that puck battle as well. Caravan really not happy with that lack of a call. Can it lead to something? Reese Metham, she has Gagnon, Gagnon on the wrong handedness. Bill Adoa, hack of a shot wide, and Merriman will touch it with a high stick. Hack to Reedman, Bill Adoa, the play still alive because the Ketaban touched it. Gagnon, a shot, it trickles through, rests in, tries to freeze it, a wrap around, a touch by Lalonde, it's loose in front, the Ketaban can't clear it. We're into the final minute here, Picard, she'll skate through center, try for the empty net. And a goal, it's deflected off of Gigi and into the net for Jade Picard. Picard opens her account on the year. That'll make it four to one. Gigi's had a flurry of action, but just couldn't get it, get it over the line and they pay for it. And that'll, I mean, there is still a minute left, but that'll pretty much call it for the game here. 
tonight at the Mitchell Sports Complex. And again, yes, there were definitely some opportunities that the GGs had right in tight, but the problem was they were so tight in close to Resi and they had no space, no opportunity to get that puck lifted up over her and put it in the net. Brianna, I think that there's a lot of positives to take away from this game. You know, this is a young team. There's a lot of new faces, a big change here for this program. A lot of players being ho hoisted into bigger roles. You think of uh, Elisa Biesenthal, who is now expected to be the number one goal scoring threat. Jade Todd, a little bit larger of a role as well. And then the role of some of the rookies, we see Florence Lassard. I thought she had a great game. Um, Merriman had flashes and uh, Emily, uh, and sorry, May Melie Laplante. Also very steady at the back, not afraid to go forward as well. I think a lot of positives to take away for this young group. But this Ketaban team has come out. They lost their biggest score as that one shot on by Sarah Zan, shot on to Sarah Zan. She'll freeze it on up. It's been a very good game from both of these teams. Ketaban finished the season last year ranked fifth in the country. I think it's a good starting point for both teams. And again, you have to take a step back after this game from both sides, right? From the Carabao, from, you know, as a winning, you know, perspective. And then from the GGs as not so, you know, successful this evening. But it, it's the first game of the season. It's such a long season. This is not the time necessarily where you want to be peaking. You want to be peaking in the second half of the season, you know, end of January, so to speak. That's when you want your power play cranking, your PK pumping out and killing off those penalties that you're undoubtedly going to take. Um, you know, after this, I think there's some positives, like you said, and areas to develop for next weekend when they head into a couple of games as well, Friday and Saturday. Right, you are, Brianna. But that'll do it for us here. We're going to quickly get into your three stars. And so for the three, three stars that we have this evening, the third star we have from you, Ottawa, number nine, Angelique Peru with you know, a goal, so she starts off this season here tonight with one goal so far. Second star of the game we have from the Montreal Carabins, Jessica Boulanger, number 55, as she had quite a an all-around steady game and then two assists on top of that. And then the first star of this game is number 51 from Montreal Carabin, Kellyanne Nadeau. I mean, she had a tremendous game defensive-wise, great body positioning, protecting the puck, good passing. And then she also had an absolute candidate of a shot for her goal and then an assist on another goal for the Caravan as well. An outstanding game. Brianna, that'll do it for us here on the GG's YouTube channel. Don't, you won't want to miss next week's game. The Crosstown Rivals, the Carlton Ravens, come to visit the Minto Sports Complex for their first meeting of the season. The Caravan will be back here at the end of November for all your information and for tickets, please go to ggs.com. Brianna, and I will see you next week and enjoy your week, folks, and we'll talk to you soon.